Are you telling me when we're good to go? Or am I, do I need to decide it myself? <laughs> All right. Welcome, everyone. Come in, come in. Um, my name is Birgit. I'm the director of product for MediaWiki and developer experiences at the Wikimedia Foundation. The next 25 minutes, we're going to talk about MediaWiki, more precisely, the future of MediaWiki. Um, some of you may have heard of the work that is underway to develop um, a plan for a sustainable future of a platform already. So, okay. can you take this microphone? Okay. Um, can you turn on this mic? Is it on? All right. Cool. Sorry for disappearing from the screen for a moment. I tried to read my speaker notes. I need glasses, actually. Um, so yeah, we are going to talk about MediaWiki, MediaWiki strategy, MediaWiki future in the next 20 minutes. This is going to be an overview, so we're not going to go too deep into the field. But if you have any questions afterwards, I'm, I'm around for the next days, please come find me. Okay, first of all, a few data points around MediaWiki. Um, so MediaWiki is, is um, obviously the, the hard piece of, of the site. Um, MediaWiki has originally been developed for Wikipedia, then got um, used by Powered All Wikimedia Projects. It's also used outside of Wikimedia, so has a very vast variety of use cases um, that it supports. I think that is an important data point here, and the other important data point here is that we're talking about more than 20 years, so that means that it's a very powerful software, it has brought us here, but also means that it's an old software and that has some challenges, um, that is visa, and these challenges are reason why I'm standing here and giving the talk, because these are some of the things we're going to change. Um, another important data point is that it runs in, um, in our own data centers. So we have two data centers, three caching centers to kind of um, empower content delivery across the world. And again, here it's the hard piece of everything. So the load, the demand, the product requirements for the software are incredible. Because um, as you may know, we're talking about billions of page views and millions of edits. We're talking about supporting a very large collaborative user base, and we're talking about supporting technical contributors who either contribute to the software or who build on top of the software. So which, is a, which altogether makes a huge scale and um, um, gives basically the, some guidance on the product requirements for the software that needs to uh, scale for, for these use cases. Um, specifically, I think what is very rare on the web, or maybe it's unique on the web, that very high read traffic coincidence with very high edit traffic, right? So for example, in the moment where you have an event like an election, a lot of people are going to a page, for example, English Wikipedia and French Wikipedia to learn about the election. At the same time, editors come to the page, they may nitpick each other, they may update it, right? And so kind of uh, the, the, the result of that is kind of it's spiraling and the cache is permanently invalidated, right? So it goes faster and faster and faster. And the more uh, um, attention is on the event, the more you will see that effect happening. And that again tells a story about requirements for the software. So that's very different to, to a lot of other platforms, websites that you see on the web. Okay, this is an impressive um, image that I got from Amir, who is sitting here in the room about, uh, it's a dependency graph of first level namespaces in MediaWiki. So one of the challenges that we have with MediaWiki, uh, due to its um, uh, dated state, is um, that it's a very entangled system. So you touch one thing, um, you touch everything. You break one thing, you may break everything. It's a very large monolith code base, and um, and that is that makes it hard to understand the system. So it kind of creates a bottleneck on how many people can actually effectively work on MediaWiki, how many how easy it is to, to onboard into MediaWiki, how easy it is to make changes. So that is another thing to think about as we're talking about the sustainable future. So sustainability is kind of also a buzzword, right? It can mean a lot of different things, but I think what we mean here is 
uh, we're talking about um, um, not only the code, but we're talking also about the people. So having enough people with enough knowledge to be able to support the system and to evolve, to evolve the platform. But on the other hand, also thinking about what are the use cases and the needs for software need to support and how do we do that effectively? How does it need to be built? What choices do we make in the platform, um, et cetera, so that it does bring us in the future and serves the core use cases that Wikipedia has. Because Wikipedia, in the end, is um, the, the, the highest bar of what we need to achieve. So that software need to achieve that scale of the billions of page views, right? And the high read traffic, uh, high, high um, edit traffic at the same time. Um, so we're talking here about con content creation, content consumption, uh, content um, um, moderation, uh, workflows, and how to support these workflows effectively through a platform. Okay. Um, about a bit more than one year ago, we kind of built a task force in the Wikimedia Foundation said like, okay, we actually really need to invest in MediaWiki because that's the core platform, it powers everything. And uh, need to think about how we do that in a way that we can evolve the software um, um, so that we have a good sustainable platform in five to 10 years, right? And um, for that, the first thing that we did is kind of saying, okay, we need product leadership, product management for a platform, which was for the first time, actually. We usually did product management for specific um, uh, feature ex end user experiences, but not for the platform itself, which is a different story. And also, um, we set up a new dedicated engineering group. Um, we, um, one of the key goals for the first year was also to create a high-level product strategy to kind of have a direction on where to go to. And then um, thinking about making progress, how can we make progress on some key initiatives? Like for example, currently we have two parsers in the ecosystem to, to render wiki text. We want to end up with only one parser and it should be the more powerful. So the project uh, that powers that is called a parser unification. So that's a key sustainability initiative. And also thinking about um, how can we enable more people to contribute effectively to MediaWiki? How can we grow the number of people who uh, contribute to the software? And the last point, resolving some long-standing questions that we all had, both in staff and in the community, on questions like, what about the release? What about stewardship uh, for specific uh, parts of the code or generally as a concept, right? So we went on solving some of these questions as well. Um, when I say strategy, I think like with the way I would think about strategy is not like you develop something and that is kind of static and then you start delivering on it. It's more like an iterative action plan, right? Where you kind of uh, do, uh, do research, you develop a rea uh, direction, you talk again to people, and you identify opportunities that may be worth um, 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 looking into and implementing and see where you get them when you go to the next step. So it's kind of an iterative action plan. So, and not like something where you would say like, we're sitting in the, in the, in the, in the chamber for two years and when we go out and when we implement. So it's more like a back and forth. So think of that, keep that in mind for the next um, slides. Um, and in a way, so one thing when we started the, the whole um, um, process and work, the first thing that we did is talking to a lot of people, because this is how you understand what people ex experience as challenges, as opportunities in the space. And uh, the key focus in the beginning was on people who actually contribute to MediaWiki Core and um, people who make uh, product decisions or in, 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 uh, for features for, for Wikimedia projects. Etc. So to learn a bit about the experience of, of um, um, that developers and users and decision makers have in the space. And so one key strength that people named in these interviews is that uh, we made really stable technology choices in the past. And that is something we should keep. And um, one example that people named is like, hey, we're using PHP and some of the developers may know that, hey, it may be not this, the programming language every new developer on the web uh, and currently is learning, but it's still a very stable community. A lot of websites are built with PHP, so it's a stable choice, right? We made that choice and it kind of helped us on the way forward. A current example for that is that we're using, um, that we're currently migrating MediaWiki from bar metal to Kubernetes, which is basically a way to streamline how you and automate uh, deployment and development processes, right? And uh, that is another um, technology choice where we felt like, okay, this had been along, uh, around in the web. It's kind of state of art. And let's put our coins, our bet on that. And um, that's the next technology choice that you're basically making, right? And so I think that 
thinking and that analysis. Um, but if you run a project like the Wikimedia projects, like Wikipedia, you need to make decisions differently, right? It can't be that you make a decision on something that, oh, that's fancy today, it may be outdated tomorrow, because the change processes are really expensive and they t take a long while, and we make the changes while users are in the system and are actively contributing to, to it, right? So change, um, there's obviously a much longer list of change, but we talked earlier about the entangled system and that everything is connected. So this is something we want to look into how we can change that a bit in terms of like introducing more modularity in the code so that you can touch one thing while not breaking the other thing. Um, some people would call that a modular monolith, so we still keep kind of uh, the house and the shape, but it's kind of more uh, having more abstraction layers in between so that you can touch one thing without breaking the other thing. Um, a few of our principal engineers led by uh, Moria, they did a really interesting analysis and uh, the question here was like, how are core wiki workflows um, currently supported, um, like added patrol for the media wiki ecosystem and how much of that is actually in the core software and how much of that is an extension, how much of that is in the user script, etc. To get a bit of a sense of uh, the, the, the environment. And then what we did is we took really um, specific use cases and one thing that we discovered is that we had to get really granular in the use case to be able, because the software behavior was different depending on whether someone edits a template or edits something else, whether it's a typo in the template or not, right? So, and really the use case here is like very, very, very granular and at that level um, being able to see, okay, how is it done in Wikipedia and how is it different in Wikidata and that gives a kind of, almost like a method how you can explore software architecture in terms of like how it's connected to the need because this is why we we have a software right like how is the software supporting the workflows that's the key question where there's always um uh, need to lead any any decision in the space so another thing to change and that is actually a brilliant a wonderful story and i'm so proud of everyone who made it happen um, one, one key challenge that we had is that we had, we have people who are really experts in media wiki. Some of them are sitting in this room actually. Um, but we are not uh, enough people. So, and that means that there's a bottleneck, a single point of failure, um, situation when you have a very specific hard problem deep somewhere in the code base and you only have one or two people who understand the problem. So we were thinking a lot about how can we change that? How can we enable more people to contribute into no media wiki and created even an, created an annual goal around that and um, created onboarding material, uh, started to invest in code review and, and better triage processes in helping people in different initiatives to drive that. And so what happened is um, we said originally we want to see a 20% growth in, uh, in people who contributed more than five patches to Media Wiki Core. And that seemed to be a weird metric, but it's a way for it was a way for us that we not would, wouldn't game the metric, right? Because it's very easy to have someone contribute the first patch. But if you get up to five and more, that means you get into the habit of contributing. You come back. Your experience is good enough so that you come back. And this is what we want to achieve, that people come back and that they continue contributing. So, in this case, um, in MediaWiki Core, um, as I said earlier, is a very large monolith uh, code base. It's huge, many, many lines of code. So, um, that was definitely the hardest uh, to achieve. We said we want to achieve 20, we achieved actually 25%, an increase in that number. And with that, all the other data points got better as well. So, more num the, the, a higher number of patches than in the previous year, a higher total number of, um, of offers. Um, better time to first review data. So all the data that can improve in developer productivity around the code base, code base actually improved. And I found that really interesting also that initially we focused actually more on staff because we were like, okay, there's this bottleneck situation. It was the volunteer number that grew more. <laughs> so I found that an interesting data point. And um, I have some uh, theories how, how that happens, but I think in the end, it's a lot about the reputation of something, right? In the moment where we say it's really important, this piece of software powers everything and we need contributors to it, right? I think this feels like an invitation to contribution. I think it's very important to do that. And uh, so my theory is that is, this is what, what is part of driving contributions. And then of course, that then you have people who support it, who provide code review, who provide a, a consultancy, et cetera. But I found this is an amazing result. It's the first time in years since we actually have grown the number here. So we're trying to, to keep that success on the way forward. 
The other extension that you're seeing here is central off. Many people of you, probably everyone who ever logged in will know central off. Um, it's a very, very critical extension in our ecosystem, but uh, regardless of being an extension, I would say it's core functionality, right? And so one thing, one decision we made this year is um, kind of taking on stewardship for central off and also driving, trying to drive contribution numbers to that. And you see the same effect central off and for media wiki core. So on the way forward, we're trying to keep that success and kind of sustain and not fall behind but it's it's a its own uh, it's its own magic so i'm incredibly thankful for everyone all the staff and volunteers who helped uh, making this this work last year it's an uh, incredible success so and a good good start in the work i think all right moving on so here if you're interested uh volunteers a bit more than 20 percent of contributions to media wiki core um, foundation, um, 73, 74%, WMD, a bit less than 5% over last year. Other organizations, uh, altogether less than 1%. So these are the main, main groups who contributed to core. Okay. Um, we talked about change. So I think like in what came through in the interviews the most is, and, and other conversations and research, but it was was like, okay, there's a lack of direction, right? So where is MediaWiki heading to? Uh, who makes this decision? Um, what are the use cases that are supported? What is not supported? Um, what about this question? What about that question? So we realized early that really the most important is, is starting to kind of be a bit more opinionated about um, uh, direction and providing guidance there. Because in the end, that is really, really trawling. It takes... If you don't know, is it A or B, or you get seven different answers, if you ask seven different people, it takes so much of your time, right? It's really, really frustrating, and you can't really focus on the stuff that you really want to focus on. So we kind of, um, the whole theme of that is like moving from project to product, um, thinking more about what are the product requirements of MediaWiki instead of like support everything, what are the things to optimize for, right? And earlier I showed the requirements for Wikipedia and this is really something uh, that needs to be reflected in a mission for the platform so that it serves these use cases well. And it doesn't mean it can't, cannot be used for anything else, but this is what needs to uh, um, um, determine the requirements. And so in the end, the design goal can be, is, is tailored around um, um, the, 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 the core wiki workflows that we're seeing on, on, on Wikipedia, right? Like moderation of content, creation of content, discovery of content, consumption of content, protection with privacy, uh, protecting the privacy of the users. That is something really key and you, uh, for us because also it changes a lot how we do the work, right? It makes a lot of things a lot more complex and harder and um, therefore, it needs to be some some part. It needs to be a part of a design goal of the core platform. And interestingly, there's one manual on MediaWiki.org that describes that already a bit. And that's manual. What is MediaWiki? It's kind of a hidden page, but it talks about the scale, it talks about the build for Wikipedia, and it talks about what that means. And also, I think the flip side of that it means that it's not designed for specific users. C can it be used for specific other users? Yes. But I think as a user of the other uses, I need to be knowing that it's not built for that, right? Similar when you have it on the manual, to be able to make an informed decision whether it's a good software for me to use or not, right? And, um, and another example for to, disclaim, to explain that, let's say you need to build a, a skyscraper and you have a certain material available and you build a skyscraper out of that material. You may be able to build a birdhouse out of the same material, but still the material needs to hold the skyscraper and not just the birdhouse, right? And that is the difference. So this is when we talk about the product requirements, what is the software needs to deliver? All right, and then platform mission enables us basically to say, putting all of this together and say like, okay, we need to be, have well-defined. We, we need to be able to tell it's built for this and not for that because this is how we know what we need to optimize for. Um, um, and in, it's about enabling um, volunteers, it's about enabling, um, providing um, open content creation. The open, again, gives you some, some requirements for the product in terms of like, it's a lot way harder to do open content than closed content, right? So, and you need to think about it differently. So, all right, I'm skipping this. Um, this is kind of like, uh, generally, the, the, the MediaWiki scope is incredibly big, right? It's the core platform, so it's huge. And so for us to kind of work through that, 
we were thinking about, okay, what are sense-making focus areas? Um, and um, for the first year, important is that we put a key focus on sustainability, right? And really thinking about the people, the code, the long-term initiatives that drive platform sustainability. But other, other uh, focus areas are here, for example, how can we provide curated uh, pathways for developers so they can build on top of MediaWiki? Think of a web APIs if you're a developer or, or uh, even like gadget infrastructure or something like, right? So something to get data out of MediaWiki, something to interact with it. Um, and the core concepts and core capabilities, that is something like what I was sharing earlier, earlier authentication, for example. Notification may be a concept. Um, 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 the way how a Wikitext is parsed may be a concept. Okay, one food for thought. We are running um, into the last four minutes, so we, and we'll talk about the future in a second, but I want to give you that food for thought. So one observation that we made is like, in the end, I think the way we have built MediaWiki so far and enabled new experience so far is that we built a lot new on top of the old, right? There's like the, the massive MediaWiki core code base, and then there's an, a new extension on top. We actually have more than 180 um, extensions in Wikimedia production, which is a lot, right? And some of them are super essential, some of them are super core, and some of them um, support very tiny, small use cases. So it's a funny, um, a wild mix. So one of the tasks that we currently have is looking at the field and understanding that better. But one food for thought, because what happened, the focus on building extensions and, new, and building the new on top of the old, kind of closed our eyes a bit in thinking about how should we systemically evolve core, right? What is the core offering that we need to give? And I think the extensions are an interesting uh, signal for that. So when you think about Wikibase and Wikidata, right? Before Wikibase and Wikidata happened, there was already semantic media wiki kind of leaning in a kind of similar direction, right? And it's all about uh, the, the, connect, the, the, the relationships between data and being able to, uh, to represent that, a knowledge graph representation in the end, and um, a structured way of handling and querying data, right? So now we have both of these are extensions and both of these, interestingly, became platforms for other things, right? Um, but in the end, if you look at these signals, you could also ask, should MediaWiki Core itself have a core capability that uh, enables us to provide to 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 have knowledge graph representation as part of a core experience, and I think this is how we could look at the lens. If you think about what are really the core capabilities the software need to support, and then there's always a question: is how expensive is that? How long does that take? Can we even get there? I think these are additional factors, but I think it's good to ask: like, what is it really what we need to support? And then thinking about a solution secondary, right? Instead of thinking of in a way, the model, how MediaWiki works, bakes us in, and even the wiki projects, they bake us in into a solution model, where you would say, new idea, new wiki project, a new feature, new extension, right? And instead of thinking a bit differently about it and uh, recognizing that these are solutions, right? And um, I think it may be, yeah, just a food for thought at this point, and we're running out of time as well. Um, but I think that is something um, interesting to think more about. All right. Two, uh, year two goals. Um, there's an annual plan on Office Wiki that you can also look into, but I want to just quickly talk about this slide here. Um, so we have currently two objectives in the annual plan that are kind of an evolution of what we did last year. One is talking about um, make sure MediaWiki serves Wikipedia well, and one is talking about make sure developers have the tools they need to effectively support the Wikimedia projects. I know. Oh, more three minutes. Okay, okay. I got three more minutes. I can't stop running. <laughs> okay, so we go one slide back. <laughs> All the time in the world. So this is the overview of the slide. Um, we're having two objectives. As I said, one focusing on um, making sure um, uh, MediaWiki supports Wikipedia well. The other one so, uh, making sure that developers have the tools they need to support the Wikimedia projects well. I think one thing to, to, uh, to keep in mind when you see those objectives, A, this is always what we are focusing on right now, right? There may be a different goal like in three years and four years, but right now we're thinking about it through this lens because it helps us shape and, and understand the needs that we need to support, right? 
So uh, if you go through these two objectives, the first four uh, key results were around basically platform and the other three are around um, helping developers um, 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 with their workflows and uh, through better services. Um, and the, now I'm going only in the, in the, in the platform ones for, for now. Um, in the first KR, this is all around uh, platform sustainability. As I shared earlier, um, um, we set a key focus on that last year already. We actually allocated a product manager to focus on platform sustainability, to focus on that kind of and really think it through what would be needed for that. In the next year, we're digging into the space of um, APIs and standards, standardization and APIs. Authentication. Um, you may, some of you may have discovered a project, a fabricator that's called Single User Login Free. And um, so the work that is underway here is kind of thinking about how does uh, our login infrastructure need to evolve so that when we're, when browser vendors make changes, we're not so dependent on them, right? And um, that is all about authentication. I think some related work in the space. So it's not only the single user login free work, it's also thinking about should we better divide uh, the authentication um, infrastructure from other infrastructure? For example, central auth for extension serves at least five different use cases. Should it only serve for authentication use case? These are questions we're, we're thinking about there. The parser unification is the big, big project we're rolling out to the production wikis. First um, uh, we'll roll out happened to wiki voyages last week. So um, it's going, it's moving forward. And the last one uh, is around observability, basically have a better way for better metrics infrastructure for MediaWiki and other software. Um, the second one is really about simplify and streamline feature development. This is about MediaWiki architecture. How can we model, model, modularize better? How can we, uh, um, 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 what, what is the relationship between core and extensions? How can we build that in a better way? So it's a lot of research in this year and you will see a lot of um, messages going out and updates and uh, questions to, to the broader tech community. And the third one is around uh, changing the way how MediaWiki um, Changing MediaWiki's process model, basically how today when you make an edit in a template, the whole page needs to be rendered again. Wouldn't it be awesome if it would be only the smallest unit so that uh, performance increases massively and also kind of provides other uh, ways of how encyclopedic content can present it to the user. For example, like more kind of a compilation of content, etc. So these are the things we're looking into. And the last uh, KR is around the release process, that we made a decision last year um, to move from um, um, supporting the releases in, in unplanned and also volunteer time to officially support the releases from the MediaWiki engineering group. And um, as part of our open source commitment, and um, so this is aligned with, uh, we wanna bring it together with other infrastructure management improvement um, um, tasks that we are having and to make that whole process easier for us. So that is kind of uh, the outlook for what's going on next year. And you can see it as basically year two of our efforts to kind of evolve the system and the architecture and the processes around MediaWiki as much as we can as much as needed, but also as much as we can, because in the end we are still wonderful people, but also small group. So we need to think about the costs and what is doable uh, to the maximum um, effect possible. All right, I'm officially at the end. Thank you all for listening. If you have questions, <laughs> please come find me. Okay, I'm just getting an update. I have five minutes for questions. <laughs> this is like... <laughs> Perfect. So first, um, before I'm asking for questions, just want to finish what I just said. Um, um, I'm going to be around the, near the hackathon area. I think in front of the hackathon area, there are tables. And one of the table uh, will have me in two days this week, uh, between 11 a.m. and 12.30. So please come find me for longer conversations, discussions, questions, anything around MediaWiki. The second thing is we are sending out only to developer audiences right now. So if you're interested, you need to subscribe to Wikitech all. I'm sorry. Um, um, a monthly Media Wiki Insights email that talks about um, um, strategy, but also kind of technical improvements that happened in the space and kind of guide through, through the story. So we're sending these emails to Wikitech and MediaWiki. L, they also are published on um, MediaWiki.org. So you can just watch that page and you see it 
popping up. Uh, that's another way of, of learning more. All right, that's it from my side. Thank you so much.